call the meeting to order. If you'd stand and say the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Pastor Paul. Bodkins, Alderman Ward 1, Jason Osborne, here. Alderman Ward 2, Mark Greening, here. Alderman Ward 3, Adrian, or Ward 2, Adrian Saunders. Alderman Ward 3, Jubin Moss. Here. Alderman Ward 3, Kent Shoemaker. Here. Okay, public comment. We have uh, Adam Grove with Farmer's Elevator. Okay, so we have a motion and a second to sell, uh, accept the offer from Monroe City Farmers Elevator in exchange for $75,000 for five acres of land in the industrial park. So it'd be subject to the appraisal. Right. Subject to the appraisal. And They'll pay for the ordinance appraisal. confirming the sale. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Okay, motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we need uh, to uh, approve the amended minutes from the February 22nd, 2024 meeting.
second to approve the minutes from February 22nd, 2024. All those in favor? Aye. Motion passes. Okay. Accounts payable for March 7th. If you're looking for invoices, we redid our process. So all of these invoices are right here. So just if you want to go through the phase sheet and whatever ones you have a question about or want to further investigate, we'll pull them out. How did Wayne rule on that? I believe that is a reimbursement. Yeah, it's a reimbursement. I assume he has to do with the total balance that he has. I think so. Okay. How are we coming with being caught up with? I'll address it in my report. I'm excited about it, though. Thank you. Thank you. I see that Henry Long Care is on here for $150. What did he do? Henry Long Care. Have him back on the first. You know what he did? We're paying him $150. I know it's a small amount, but... I know what he did. He wouldn't have anything to do with snow or no more. I don't think he did that. I don't think so. I think we have a second page here. Almost at the top. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Down from the top. It just seems out of place. I'm looking on this sheet. It says number eight. Oh, so that's my report. This right here. Oh, that's the other one. Or the other one. It should be right behind the minutes. Okay. Can you give me a second? Yeah, I'll find it. Okay. Okay. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve the accounts payable as presented on March 7, 2024. Motion is second. All those in favor? Aye. Okay, motion passes. I have this to read. AmeriCorps week is 2023 proclamation. This should be 2024. I don't know. I think there was miscommunication in the dates. He showed up tonight. Come on up. Because I don't know the details. We need to communicate with Melissa. Okay. If you remember back in February, she was talking about a proclamation. Okay. Yeah, I remember she did this last year. And that's the proclamation. And I apologize. I don't know all the details. I'll let him. Okay. All right. Thank you, Ms. Hill. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
For the record, my name is Harold Smith. I am with Douglas Community Services. I am the coordinator for the Retired and Senior Volunteer Program uh, in Northeast Missouri. We partner with a number of nonprofits uh, in an eight county area, including Monroe County. Uh, the one thing that these nonprofits all have in common is they run on volunteers. Uh, they could not do what they do were it not for the senior volunteers. Uh, and uh, the government agency in uh, the umbrella under which uh, it uh, runs is AmeriCorps. Uh, a couple of the partner agencies are the Nutrition Center and the Food Pantry here in the New York City. So that's why I'm here making the rounds of the city councils where we have partnerships. And next week, March 10th through the 16th, is AmeriCorps Senior Volunteer Week, and we have submitted for your consideration uh, uh, a proclamation that would uh, make that designation for next week uh, in Monroe City. Okay. Uh, so I read through this. Sure. Okay. Whereas service is a hallmark of the American character and has the unique ability to bring people of all backgrounds together in common cause and throughout our history, citizens have stepped up to meet our most pressing challenges of the day by volunteering in their communities. And whereas AmeriCorps Seniors Program provide opportunities for more than 200,000 Americans to serve their country through service at nonprofits, schools, public agencies, and community and faith-based groups across the country. And whereas in Monroe City, Missouri, dozens of AmeriCorps seniors, volunteers of diverse ages and backgrounds help to meet local needs at multiple locations in Monroe City by responding, tutoring, or mentoring children and youth, supporting veterans and military families, fighting food insecurity, and supporting Christmas benevolence programs. And whereas AmeriCorps seniors, volunteers, encourage collaboration and partnerships, leveraging millions of volunteers in service and acquiring the support of business, foundation, and other local partners to increase the effectiveness of their initiatives. And whereas AmeriCorps senior programs bring people together across race, age, and zip code to address critical issues facing the country, forge relationships and cultivate mutual respect and help build resilient and thriving communities. And whereas AmeriCorps senior volunteers demonstrate commitment, dedication, and patriotism by making an intensive commitment to service, a commitment that remains with them in their future endeavors. And whereas through their service, AmeriCorps senior volunteers strengthen the lives of their families, communities, and Northeast Missouri as a whole. And whereas national service rep represents a unique public-private partnership that invests in community solutions and leverages non federal resources to strengthen community impact and increase the return on taxpayer dollars. And whereas AmeriCorps Week is an opportunity to recognize the dedication and commitment of millions of Americans who have served and AmeriCorps seniors and their community partners and to encourage more Americans to follow their footsteps in service. Therefore, be it resolved that I, Jason Osborne, Mayor Pro Tem of the City of Monroe, do hereby designate March 12th through the 18th, 2023 as AmeriCorps Week in Monroe City and urge citizens to thank AmeriCorps senior volunteers for their service and to find their own ways to give back to their communities. Could I, could I, get, a, could I get a picture with, with you and me in the proclamation? Sure. Can you do that? So I, so I can prove that my boss where I was when I was <laughs> Old business that has Robert's Garage and Towing update. Robert's? Robert's Garage. Yes. So I don't know if you guys have, I'm Brian with Robert's Garage. Um, I don't know if you guys have been out there lately or not. We're wrapping, we should be wrapping up construction hopefully this week. Um, we should hopefully by the end of next week should be starting to move stuff in there. So by April 1st, we should be fully stacked over there and be there around the clock starting April 1st. Um, as Bobby had stated last uh, two meetings ago when we were here, just want to see if we get annexed into the city. Um, just want to see if you guys had had any talks about that or where we might stand on that. So the issue, and I need to find out if there's an answer to it, the way I, when I look at the Rawls County Assessor's maps, mm -hmm. your property 
is not contiguous with the city limits. Okay. So we need to figure out a way if one, we can annex something that doesn't touch the city, and if we can, how we go about doing that. Okay. So um, I was told the city of Perry may have done this, so I've been playing phone tag with the Perry city attorney to find out how they did it. Okay. So should have an answer pretty soon. Okay. So when I mean, oh, another possibility, I don't know if the neighbor, I mean, if the neighbors between you and say the bank all wanted to be part of the city, that would also take care of the issue, but then you'd have to talk to them. Okay, because just my understanding was that the property on the south end did touch part of the woods on the city from what I was told and what I had seen on the map, but I okay. could be, I could okay. be wrong, well, so I'm just not. And I could, I was going off what the Rawls County Assessor showed okay. on their maps, so that would be off too. No, I get it. So we just want to touch with that. And then mm -hmm. uh, the 23rd, I came up and did apply for a city business license. So uh, either way, if that's being, so that's just waiting on that. In fact, if you plan on um, staying until for the whole course of the meeting, you can pick it up when I go back downstairs. I can do that just that way I'll have it and get it. Yeah. Frank up and get it ready to go. So I did stop over here tonight, but um, everything is looking good, getting all the rock hauled in. There's still a gate to be put in, which could, I think, maybe a little bit later in the date, but that's going to be uh, gated access into there. So uh, that's I can say. We'll just plan on coming back to the next meeting and see where we're at from there. All right. Okay. Thank you. Guys. Appreciate Thank it. you. Uh, the next is mayor's report, but she's not here. Uh, Kevin, I guess you can come up here because it's my understanding you had some concerns with the testing on payroll system, your department. I got it, dude. Okay, you want to come up and talk? That's all I got to say. We're just having trouble from day one. Like such as? Well, you've got problems with it too, your vacation and uh, stuff. You never you got your vacation straight to have No, got that straight now. That's that's an easy fix. I haven't had time to sit down one on one with the employees and get those um, numbers updated. So, and then I I guess several of your employees are having trouble. You got some of them that have to get in on the computer. The computer's been checking them out. Sometimes it takes them 10 to 15 minutes before they can clock in. Clock in. And I know some of them can clock in like from their home. And sometimes it don't even work. Period. And yeah, and some of them clock in at home and start on the clock and charge you overtime for five or all. Well, uh, that's all their complaints right there that I've got. So, I mean, you're paying however much a year plus. As soon as they clock in, you're paying overtime right there. And I know my dad was having trouble because there wasn't a computer to clock in. On. Where before you clocked in by 7:25 and you got your straight, you didn't get 10 minutes or whatever, which would add up for 80 hours. Sometimes they might get 20 hours of overtime for doing nothing. But that's up to you all. That's the complaints we're getting. Are we able to just go back to doing plain old payroll? I mean, you can, but that's going to sink a lot of time. I mean, um, even if we so talk. this is the first I've, um, I've heard. Um, Obi and I have talked about his vacation, um, and I've let him know um, that it's uh, a fairly easy fix, honestly. I just need the time to sit at home with him. Um, he's provided me some documentation for that. But this is the first I've heard of the city department and those issues. The other departments. Well, the mayor had a meeting with all the employees, and <coughs> they had their complaints to her, and she said that y'all was probably going to do away with it. So they had all changed the next meeting. Mm -hmm. they had. So I don't know which way they're going. Wishy washy, whatever. Well, we talked about this two meetings ago. And you told me then you thought you would have it fixed, and it's not fixed yet. I know you've been busy with a lot of other stuff. Yeah, but we don't have Phoebe. But, uh, well, even Jackie has offered to come in and do payroll. Yeah. 
That would be two hours. The office. issue with that is it's not just payroll. It is several reporting aspects of it that have to be sent off to the state in a timely manner. Um, your labor statistics reports. Uh, all of there's there's that side of it that's got to be you know, recorded properly and sent off to the state in a timely manner. There was a lot of holes, um, gaps where it was timely, then again it would be timely for six months. Um, so there's that side of it if we take it back in house that's time consuming. Um, the issue that they're specifically talking about is. Uh, a government requirement uh, is the it's called MFA, uh, multi multi factor authenticators. They uh, weren't going to go, weren't going to force um, third party human resource companies that did payroll to go live with it until <laughs> the end of this year. Well, in a matter of six weeks, they decided no. Nope, in six weeks from now, we're going live, and gave them six weeks to get everything up to par and ready to go. Um, the day, and, and most of the companies, <coughs> most of them complied, was able to, to do that. The day that they went live was also the day uh, the cutoff for our payroll. Uh, the entire MFA system on the government side crashed and took the payroll systems with it. Um, and what he's specifically talking about, the clock in issue, um, was that they, when, the, when they went live with it, it triggered the employee to uh, have to set up a, a multi-factor authenticator. So they had to set up an iris scan or a pin or just another security component for them to be able to get into the system. Um, most of them set up pins. Um, most of them had issues the first time and didn't have issues beyond that. Um, any of the employees that had an issue with it usually came in that day. Uh, and I helped him with it. Uh, I know. I think it's still uh, an issue, is it? My mom is trained, has been trained to print my dad's check sets from home. She can't get on it at home. Well, uh, he's not even in there. Why? He was not put in there. Is that, not by me. So how's he caught <laughs> getting in and out? Well, he got in and out. Well, I don't think he is caught in and out. Yeah. But yeah, it, takes him a, yeah. it takes him. It takes him. See this. Oh, you're, I'm thinking. Yeah. Not your dad. Sorry, my brain is slipping. Oh, that's his. Yeah, his brother. Yeah. yeah that's where my brain went. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. He has, he has to yeah. use a computer, and he said that half the time I don't think they have a good computer down there, and my mom brings his check steps from home, but she hasn't been able to because she, she can't get on it. It won't let her. I'm going to throw it out there. I don't know if we can do, a wrong, do away with the testing. I mean, you can gradually, I do it, gradually let her get where they can get it all worked out. Go back. To, uh, the old clock never did fail. I mean, punch in a time card. I mean, testing on can't be set up where the guys. I mean, that was my suggestion months ago because it just statistically, guys who are in the field mm -hmm. and show up at a shop and that's where they start their day go out have always preferred being able to use a, a, a card to punch in well out. that's what they've got down there right yeah we got time we still got time clock down so they can yeah. clock in clock out and then you all put in their time or how? yeah i could do that that's i mean it, that, the supervisor is what it going to be eventually the supervisors do it right or do you do it now I used to always do their paperwork and, you know, go off their time card and I turned it in. Because right now they're yeah. punching a the time card, correct? And doing that? I've got to punch in a time card, too. To yeah. Because they don't trust the system. Punching a time so. Because it takes them 10 or 15 minutes to try to get clocked in because Robbie has been having trouble, too. If you want to just go to doing the time card and, and bring me those time cards, make sure you sign off on them so I don't have to call and say, hey, is this is this accurate? Um, I don't mind putting in those numbers. What did that work? That's how we always did. I know, but I'm saying, will that work for you? Work for the guys? It's fine for me, but I'm just. He doesn't clock in now. I don't know about the other guys how they're going to know. Well, I know they don't clock in now, but still, he can do I'm just speaking for them. So, would we. Can you get his. What if, if you get his vacation up to date and he's maxed out, or is he going to get penalized for losing? All that vacation that he's been over with. 
Yeah, I mean, everybody's vacation and sick time is not correct. <clears throat> yeah, but your vacation should be way, and you got a certain limit that you got. Yeah, it hasn't been right from when they started this. That's what I'm saying. You, you, he's got a, will he get yes. penalized from, no, when I, you bring it up to date, will he get penalized for being way over or will it just drop off? Well, neither. That's not the only, the only option for it. Um, there's several ways to get it correct. We can raise parameters for certain employees because his his parameters are different. Like his, he was grandfathered mm -hmm. in. Um, so stuff like that um, isn't going to be an issue to fix. I, I have a lot of flexibility on what I can, you know, can make happen in terms of setting that up. <clears throat> now, like I can speak for the gas guys and the electric guys. They like Tessian. They use it without issue. If there's an issue, they text me. I've heard it a little different. They frequently heard, come into the office and, and they, they do like it, Kevin. That. They like it, especially two, two guys, other guys, guys particularly. I've heard. I mean, they can handle it or whatever you want to call it. it don't mess up on them like it on ours. Electric <laughs> guys know some of them screws up too. So. And I've made a lot of adjustments where previously there was three different categories of how the guys got paid. There was call back time, call in time, on call time. And that none of that was ever like set up at Tessium. So I went in and set it up where they um, can select which one it is when they're, you know, if they're called back or called in. Um, they select it from a drop down, and the, the rate of pay for that is, is a preset number. And for that entire time, that's what, you know, they're paid. Do, they not, do you guys not have a good computer where you're at? Yeah. Rodney's on the computer, but he can't do it on his phone. But can he do it on that computer down there? Huh? Can he do it on that computer down there? Yeah, sometimes. It'll, it'll not all, he said it takes about 15 minutes because it'll kick him out. Or... Yeah, I mean, we got computers everywhere. I can say they're great, but they work. That ain't but, but you said he was having trouble clocking in. Yeah, yeah, but I don't know if it's the computer or it's the test <laughs> cycle. The problem. Is it possible that it could be a Wi Fi connection issue? It's called so the same thing. Well, they're in a metal building down there. Yeah, if they're in a metal building. When we can't clock, clock in, Tabitha, when she made these papers up, it's called punch, miss punch. We fill it up. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If it didn't clock in at 7 30 or whatever. It wouldn't clock him in. We got to fill this paper out. Miss Punch, whatever day and time. More paper has it. Mm -hmm. When it was simple to tell before. <coughs> so, guys, this thing's computerizing. <laughs> I think it's a way, this, I'm just going to put it out there, what my personal feeling is on it. I think it's a waste of money for no more employees that we pay. We're in a crunch that we're in, and we're going to pay, you know, we're paying the fee. Mayor, I most people So I was told to fee for testing on is only $6,000. It is. You'll spend more paying me per hour to do payroll I don't, I strongly, I, I mean, I don't know. Gary and Jackie both said it was the easiest task when they were here to do payroll. Jeanette, Jeanette backed me up on it last time saying that it is definitely like a, a part time job when it comes to payroll for almost 60 employees. 58 employees. 
I'll second your motion. You can bring Jackie in and still say money paying her a few hours. Are we locked into a contract, though? That's what I yeah. want to know. It's, we were told by Tim that we could walk away at any time. <laughs> I said a lot of things. Don't know the answer to that. <laughs> yes, that's true. Okay, we have a motion and a second to do away with the Tessian payroll system. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Motion passes. <clears throat> okay. Next. City Clerk's report. Okay. Um, AP update. As you can see in the previous accounts payable, it was a drastic dollar amount of difference. Um, the check register sheet that you have, that is um, everything that a check has been cut. That's straight out of GWorks. There's a check number listed. I decided to go with this report that kind of validates that it was paid more so than, you know, just the verbal that it's been paid. There's a check number next to every single um, business. It shows the dollar amount, and every single one of those checks have left the building. During that process, we also pulled out um, anything that would have been double paid, and this was the result. There's over three hundred thousand dollars worth of bills that was approved two to three times that if change didn't happen would have been paid twice. This stack. Three hundred thousand got paid twice? No, that's not what I said. I said if we hadn't made the changes we did. Okay. And drastically improved it in a, in a rapid time frame. This would have been <coughs> paid twice. Oh, multiple, more than twice. Um, we had Tom Meyer come in um, and assist us with it, or we never would have gotten out from under the stack of all the past due that payments that needed to go out. Um, Dina came in and assisted Alex and I, and we were able to redesign our process, um, make it a lot faster, a lot cleaner, and just get out from the mountain that piled up. Uh, and we are, I would say, 98% current. Um, I think there's still a few little invoices that we have uh, questions on. Um, but I would put us at, after this check register with all of the checks and dollar amounts on it, it would put us at least 98, 99% up to date and paid. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a huge relief. Um, something nice to have off of our Maya and Alex's to-do list. Um, uh, lead line inventory grant. Um, I got in touch with Dan Dover. Dan Dover. Um, and he gave me uh, quite a few um, a lot of articles, um, a lot of resources that's going to help us with the deadline um, inventory grant. We already have the grant, um, but there's a couple of hoops we need to jump through with the states and then get um, uh, contractors in here to um, give us some official bids and get moving on that. Then we are on a time crunch on that. So um, I've made a phone conference with him tomorrow morning to get moving, uh, make some progress on it. And do you guys have this in your folders? Yeah. Okay. Um, I do need um, an approval on this. Uh, this was for the county line road project. Uh, it came from Shannon Howe at Howe Company LLC um, and from Dorothy Walsh, which is the um, environmental assistant. 
grant specialist personnel that's assigned to us. <laughs> um, that the materials and labor is 663 is not reimbursable, but they can't move forward until this is um, approved and, and paid in order, I guess. So I will need a motion to move forward with that. This is for the county line road? Uh-huh, yes. Is that even still in play? And that's going to be part of my report as well. Okay. Um, so we can label it in this report. I guess that it works. So they already done this work. Um, I think I did. Are you looking at the email? I'm looking at. No, I'm looking at the wrong thing. The six hundred sixty-three dollars. Yeah. yeah. To relocate a line. I believe it's the poles. Yes. So they already moved them. No, they have oh, okay. not. Okay. Okay. They are not going okay. until it's approved. Okay. All right. Yeah. We'll talk about that tomorrow. Okay. I'll table this. Mayor, didn't we kill the county line road project? That's what I was thinking. I thought it was no more. What are we spending money for? If we're, I well, think nobody's we're authorized any money to be spent. Good.
I want to do it for thirteen thousand. <laughs> no. If he wants to do it for thirteen hundred, I would say in the per moto. Yeah, it's per moto. And the other guy that qualified, if you take, uh, he's bidding twenty five hundred for number seven. So if you take that out, it lowers his bid a little bit. So he was bidding twenty five hundred for just doing number seven. And he also. Uh, I had a little disclosure in his um, bid that I liked that uh, area six mm -hmm. uh, for an extra five thousand dollars people mow it every week and keep it at a very manageable height and that's a really not popular <laughs> which one was area six it sounds like oh. uh-huh it's, it's highly utilized I think they um, well, you don't want to use it yeah, he and he's actually um, the only one that has the equipment to do the job too. And he has twice the minimum requirement on insurance. He carries double. Double the amount, right? Well, I'm gonna put this in the form of a motion for number uh, for the cemetery area seven. I'm gonna put in the form of a motion to award that to. Elite lawn care for thirteen hundred dollars per mow for this mowing season that's coming up. Second. So we have a motion and a second to award the cemetery area seven to elite lawn care for thirteen hundred dollars per mowing for uh, the two thousand twenty four mowing season. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, motion passes. And then the next one I'm going to put in a form of motion to award areas one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, and nine to Terrell Lawn Care, uh, which they're big. That time you take out $2,500 for seven, it comes down to $35,000 for the season. What your bid is, because we no, can't. there's a separate bid for the separate bid. Thing. Oh, there's a separate because this has it all areas, including seven for this amount. And uh, I, I broke it up though. Uh, well, then it'd be forty thousand probably. Yeah. Huh? Yes, correct. All right. Well, I'll change my motion. Is that give him all the areas except number seven for forty thousand dollars, and this is going to cover from. The mowing date from this year till the end of this season. Is that what you understood by the time yes. we took that out? Does yes. that include area six? No, oh, we took area six out. Oh, okay. That's why I took twenty five hundred dollars off of that forty two five. Okay. So for forty thousand. Forty thousand. He's doing one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine. Correct. Right. right? He's good with that. Okay. So you made that into a motion? Yes, sir. I showed you. That's two year bid, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Two year bid. That's right. It's in six South Lake. Uh, yeah, but he's got a separate bid in there for South Lake. It falls in underneath there. He's gonna mow area six weekly. Oh, cool. He's gonna mow it when he mows everything else weekly, and that's why his bid was a little higher. Sure. That's why we took it down to forty. Or it went down to forty thousand because he, we took the twenty five hundred out. Yep. So that's in the form of a motion. Okay. Second. So we have a motion and a second to award Terrell Lawn Care areas one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, and nine for forty thousand dollars for the two thousand twenty four mowing season. This is a two-year job for two both. Two-year contract for both. Right. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, right. Any opposed? Okay, motion passes. Good with that. And that is everything I have. City Attorney's report. Um, so Debbie asked if she could speak about the Holy Rosary Alley. And I said, I some of my time to her. <laughs> oh, thank you, John. I'm glad we played out. I was hoping that worked. But, so, was the council given 
the petition for vacation of the alleyway. We're talking about the two alleys that run underneath Holabird Road, the site of Holabird Gym, and what was Holabird Tree School that should have been handled back in 1959. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Quite, uh, quite well. Yes. So, <laughs> We're still, we're still talking the same map. Yeah. This one's prettier. It was done by an attorney in St. Louis. We let you do it, John. I didn't want to do this. Because <laughs> <laughs> nice. it is. So, this is what the alleyway looks like that they're going to be asking you to vacate, which is simply an that's simply going to take an ordinance, correct, John? Yeah, I mean, that's. And all we're going to do is vacate this. Just say it goes away. Yeah, and there's nothing going to happen. I mean, mm -hmm. nobody's going to go in and put an alley down or nothing like no. that. It's going back to the previous owners. In this case, that is Bernadette Mudd. Yeah. Because her alley was still there. Right, right. The rest of it's Pace Building. Mm -hmm. And then back to Hoover Street, which is the Jefferson City Diocese. Who owns the base building now? You know? Perfect. Who owns the base building now? Uh, you would ask me that. Well, I was just curious. I hear them over there clunking around. They're not clunking in a whole lot of it, though. No. The name slips me at the moment. I'm sorry. I'll come up with it. I'll let you know. I'm just mad they put the cable across the opening down there. I can't park across the street. Not as, not as friendly as the last over. No. We have done that. But, so correct me if I'm wrong, John Russell. We are awaiting the wording of the ordinance from the attorney for the diocese in St. Louis. Okay. Once we get that. So I, I told him he can either prepare it or he can send me the language he wants sent. Okay. I'll put it in an ordinance. Uh, either way, it should be a pretty quick process. I think the council's already voted to move forward. Yeah. Correct, so. correct. So this is just an update. Yeah. We've got our paperwork in order, except for the ordinance. So all we need is an ordinance now. Yep, so we would like to be on the agenda for the 21st next yeah. meeting, correct? If you get the new down in St. Louis. We'll get him. Huh? I called the chancellor of the diocese today. We'll have it. Okay. So we would like to be on the agenda for the next meeting. Sounds good. It's, that's our formal request. Bottom line. Sounds good. Okay. You got any questions? Yeah, we're. We're all seeing what the main street. Okay. So this is the old gym. This is gone. This is this is not right. Okay. <coughs> Those alleys have been gone since 1959. They're gone. Oh, okay. There's so I just want to make sure there wasn't a sewer main or no. water main laid in that right of way. And that's no. what I, so it's not here? No, no, it's underneath the gym. It's underneath the, underneath the, edge the gym. Of the gym. Okay, and the, the it was underneath the school. Three inch gap right there then. No, no, oh, no, we're close. We're in the city when they okay. put it in. No, oh, we're close. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah. I said there's right there at that corner. We're coming down a long pace and then there's the alley that goes that way. Yep. There's a three inch gas line that goes right there underground. Beside it. Huh? Beside this. Sure, right. right in it. But it's way it's down there. It's, we dug about twenty feet to get to it when we dug. Me and Jack Little and Ella Smith with it. <laughs> That's some history. John, thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Uh so the only other thing that I was going to bring up is the county line road project. Uh, I talked to Cindy Holtz at Mark Twain Council of Governments, and I mean, at some point in the next few months, she's going to sit down or either come to a meeting or sit down with the mayor and council at the time and kind of talk about the way forward. Their grant, if we're going to continue with the project. There are grants that we need to submit for. There's also invoices um, that we'll have to get paid. So I guess, I mean, this is only gonna apply to Mr. Osborne, but the new council and mayor will have to make some decisions on that issue. Because 
it's going to be pretty expensive, and you know the city's going to have to decide whether it's worth the worth the money. Yeah. So. But other than that, we've, the other issue that I was going to bring up was the annexation, which we already covered. So yeah. That's all I got. Okay. Uh, planning and zoning, Jeff Botkins isn't here tonight. Parks and recreation, um, nothing. Economic development, that's under Jeff Botkins. Administrative report, we have not had an administrative committee meeting, uh, but it is in the paper right for an administrative assistant and on um, Indeed. And then uh, nuisance report. Well, last meeting got canceled. Okay. But they, we're going to have a meeting the, on the 11th at 11th of March. Yeah. Uh, yeah, March. 5.30. What time did you say? 5.30. Okay. Anything else? Yeah, okay. Uh, George, do you have anything about water and sewer? I do not at this point, no. Okay. Uh, Mr. Buckman, <laughs> with the airport, do you have anything to report um, on? Are we, uh, Lowering the fuel price down to five dollars to get more in line with the other air, airports around the area, which is still uh, making seventy cents a gallon over what the city has invested in. Um, the uh, credit card machine on the side of the building is out in the open. When you when the sun is in the afternoon, people can't see it to read it. I'm going to, uh, with your permission, build a kind of an awning over the top of it. I've got some lumber at home. I think I can come up with enough to cover it. We can. Um, I don't know if something that the building inspector needs to look at it or something before I do it. Okay. Might not hurt I'd like to, to, like to have permission to do that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the courtesy car has been used a few times and it's working out well. Good. Yeah. So we appreciate that. Yeah. Um, you get that bill, you need some help hanging it. Talk to Kevin, then they'll help you hang that lock or whatever. Okay. Over the top of that. All right. I'm kind of a one legged man for a while here. I had my knee replaced oh. six weeks ago. So. And uh, I hate to bring it up, but I haven't been paid since the first of the year. I talked to the <clears throat> Jennifer about it. We're trying to figure it out. Okay. Also, um, they couldn't come up with a 1099 for last year. It's 1099 that one um, payment on it for the whole year, but that was because no records were sent to Desion. Since they did any 1099s go out? Yes, um, I did get some 1099s out. There's still more um, that went out because I can't find records from prior to Tession for those 1099s. They should do it, but it, no, if we never submitted the information to them, they can't. That's what the problem is, is the information was never submitted to them. That's the same on the um, vacation and stuff. No, no, it's not your fault. No, you walked into a street department. What? Y'all have executive session? Yes. We've got a man that needs to raise. Can we do it in open session? I think it has to be done in open session, doesn't it? Yeah. He wants a guy that he's got working for him. Yeah, vote on that now. Come Bumped on. up to <laughs> Robert Bohr. Come Robert on up Moore. here. He started, you can hear me. He started, <laughs> uh, my three guys are a month apart. He started the gas department and he got paid cheap when he started there compared to what they're paying now. So I want to move him up even with my guys, which just consists of an 86 cent rate. You know, all of my three will be the same. There's two guys, guys, that were moved from probation to regular. Um, but no raise was discussed or approved, so I would like that to be addressed as well um, right now. What? Huh? What? 
I will I put in the form of motion that we give Robbie Board his 86 cent raise and make him equal with the other two employees down there. How much was it? 86, 86 cents. All three of mine be making the same. I'll second that. So we have a motion in the second to give Robbie Board an 86 cent raise to make him equal with the rest of the employees of the street department. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Did you have something, Jennifer, that you yes. want to talk about raising? She or? said yes. It's to um, gas or three gas employees, the three new guys. They're all three new, aren't they? Yes. The new. How long have they been they're past their six months. Yeah, they're they're off. They're, it was voted last meeting or meeting before they take them off probation. probation. But he didn't ask for a raise for them or you know specify. I, I believe it's a policy fifty cents. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for fifty cents raise after they finish their probationary period. So you want all three of them to get raised? Is there a, that, is there a supervisor filled out the? He did, didn't he, the uh, evaluation forms for yes. them? Yes, yep, I got the evaluation forms, um, and he got those filled out, uh, but I think he just assumed you guys would know that it was, they needed a raise. And as long as they're doing a good job and he's happy with their performance. Yeah, he, okay. and he is, he indicated that they all three were, were deserving of it. So I'll make a motion to give the three gas department employees that are new um, a 50 cent per hour increase in their wages since they come off of their probationary period. And we probably need to retro pay that back to when they come off of their probationary period. So we have a motion and a second to uh, retroactively pay the three gas department employees at 50 cents per hour to their wages uh, as they have completed their probationary period and had a successful evaluation. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, police department. Nothing? Okay, Zach's not here. Fire department? We have none. Nothing? Okay, that's it. We have a motion. Marvin, you got something? No, I'm not. You're right when you hand it back. Oh, you have something for the pool? No, no, okay. I didn't want to miss you. <laughs> Mrs. Mrs. Moss. <laughs> Mrs. Moss, Mrs. Moss, do you have anything pool? about the pool? No, he's got some bids and stuff he's going to oh, look at first. Okay. Before we it. Since you're here, I'm Okay, so that's it. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Huh? Are you going into closed session? No, we're done. Okay. We're done. Thank you very much.